Hey, what's up everyone? It's about Alter Tech back again with an exciting video. In today's video, I want to teach you guys how to capture some amazing raw images and how to edit them with your Pixel 6 and OnePlus 9 Pro. Alright, so if you guys are trying to decide which phones for you and you guys are into photography and you guys do enjoy editing in RAW, now for the OnePlus 9 Pro and Oxygen OS 12, the camera app, I don't believe it's finished, but for the Pixel 6, their camera app is pretty much almost done. So you guys can go ahead and open up the camera app, and I want you guys to go ahead and tap on this gear icon up on top. As soon as you tap on that gear icon, it should say RAW and JPEG, and you would select it in RAW. And let's go ahead and take one shot with the main camera, one shot with the ultra wide, and let's see if it works with 2x as well. I don't expect it to work at 2x because that's digital zoom. So now this is my raw folder. It says raw up and top over here. And for the last one, oh, actually, it took the 2x in raw as well. That's interesting. And now you have your ultra wide, and now you have your wide. That's pretty simple. So it takes two photos, one with the auto mode and one in raw format. So now for the OnePlus 9 Pro, you do have to go through some extra hoops and I'm hoping they could go ahead and make this shorter with that new raw mode they were supposed to be coming out with on the OnePlus 10 Pro. Hopefully it gets ported into the OnePlus 9 Pro. So what you gotta do is open up your camera app, tap on expert mode, tap on these three dots, tap on where it says raw, and let's try that again. So you'll take one with your main sensor. And then you want to take it with your telephoto. And tap on it. Then you want to take one with your ultra wide. And then you tap on it. So here's the thing. Is it going to take two copies like on the pixel? One, two, one. Yeah, so it does take two copies. One of it is going to be on RAW, and one of it is going to be with the automatic software processing on the camera app. So those are two of the differences, and it's just very much more easier to access on the Pixel. And for me, when you're on the move, usually you guys want to have that RAW mode setting available at all times, so you don't have to really think about it. I mean, this is a feature that's also available on the iPhone 13 Pro. So let's go ahead and talk about editing your photos. So let's go ahead and open up Photos. And what I like to do is I like to edit photos in... Adobe Lightroom. So what I would do is go ahead and open up Adobe Lightroom and I do have some presets I've created. So let's go ahead and look at my photos real quick. And this one I just edited today and this photo, this one was very popular on Twitter. All right, so usually when I'm editing, the first thing I would like to do is, is I would like to go ahead and edit lights. Usually the highlights are just very, very blown out. So I would like to go ahead and just tone it down. So I'm about two feet away from my phone, so my editing isn't going to be, you know, on top shape right now. I'm just trying to go ahead and just demonstrate to you guys what I'm trying to do. So for the highlights, I'll work on the highlights, and then I'll look at the shadows. And then for the, I usually don't mess around. I mean, for this, sometimes I'll try to balance the whites and the blacks. And contrast, sometimes I like to add a little bit. I know with these newer smartphones, they like to add a whole ton of uh, contrast and they like uh, deep blacks. And for the mood, it just gives me more of a dystopian type, you know, dark vibe. People say it's more realistic, but it doesn't make any sense. The sky, when the sky is pitch black, that's not realistic. To me, this right now is more a, a realistic image of this night. So it really comes down to marketing and... Um, you guys can't believe everything you, you hear on uh, mainstream. Now, once you're done with the light, I'll go ahead and play around the colors. Uh, usually the temperature is like really good already on the pixel. And what I would like to do is focus on the individual colors. So you guys can control your reds. If you want it more on the purplish side or more on the yellow side, you guys can go ahead and slide it. And the same thing for other colors as well. And sometimes you guys maybe want to add more saturation or maybe you guys might want to hide those colors. So you can go ahead and turn it up or turn it down. And for the luminance, um, for example, like the reds, if you guys want to make those, those reds even brighter, you guys can. If you want to dim it down, you can. So um, hopefully I'm explaining this all right for you guys. Now for the color grading, you have your shadows, your mids, and your highlights. So for your shadows, let's say you guys want that Midnight City vibe 
I would usually go ahead and try to get it in the bluish section or purpler section. Like so, somewhere in between. And sometimes maybe I'll play around with the highlights as well, depending on the photo. So for the highlights and the bright areas, as you guys can see, all those lights are actually changing color. So that's what this is for. And you do have your mids as well. Now for your mids, it's not your shadows, it's not your highlights. It's more like in between. So the image that's like, you know, midway, midway between the high exposed and low exposed areas. So you guys can see it actually changes that. And you guys can go ahead and play around with it. The lumens, you guys can um, play around with this as well. If you want to mute it, turn it up. You also have blending and balance as well. So the way how I actually learned how to do this was just by experimenting and not by reading books, just by trying it out. Uh, for me, I don't really learn by reading. I actually learn by doing stuff. And something else you guys can also do is add some clarity and add some texture. So for the OnePlus 9 Pro, if I take a photo and there's like, it's not that very, you know, it doesn't look like it's very detailed or texturized. I could go ahead and just turn up the clarity and temp texture up. But the problem with that is that sometimes you guys could go ahead and you may, let me show you guys real quick. It will just be way too much. It'll look way too over processed. And I've seen this look in some pixel images. And that's why I was kind of shocked. I guess they went a little bit over too aggressive when it came to the software processing in this year's model. But, you know, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt because they're using a new sensor, number one, for the cameras. And they're using a new chip as well, their own homemade chip. And sometimes at night, you know, they'll have like a lot of noise up in the sky. What I could do for that is go into detail and go down to where it says noise reduction and I could crank it up. But the problem is the more you um, turn it up, the more noise, you, well, the more softer the image becomes. Because this is, isn't really removing the noise. What it's doing is it's actually uh, digitally, uh, it's just trying to, you know, mesh everything in. It's like, think of someone taking a, a washcloth, and this is like a painting. They're just smudging everything over. So you guys don't see that uh, weird noise you usually get at night when the phone is incapable of, when the ISO is usually too high. So ISO, when you're taking a photo at night and it's very dark, the phone has an ISO. Um, for the Pixel, there isn't a pro mode. So this is one benefit of the OnePlus device for professionals. For expert mode, you guys could also control your everything. You have a pro mode. So from your ISO, you guys could turn it down. And here, you're not gonna get any noise. The lower the ISO, the less noise you have. And you guys can go ahead and control your shutter. But as you guys can see, if your ISO is very low, it's going to get very, very dark. And then you got to increase your shutter speed. And then your photo is going to come out very, very blurry. Unless you go ahead and use a tripod. And you guys could also use manual focus as well. But the focus on the Pixel has been amazing. I haven't, I can't remember taking one shot and wish the photo was out of focus. And um, to be honest, the Pixel is still the king of uh, pointing and shooting. If I'm going out in the streets and I want to take a really quick photo, you know, double tap this camera. This is my Samsung Galaxy S21, uh, which is also a great phone, which you could also go ahead and shoot in RAW real quick. I could probably show you once I turn this on. But um, I'm looking forward to the Galaxy S22 Ultra, by the way, uh, for that camera system. I heard they're going to support RAW. And I know the OnePlus 10 Pro as well, they have this new RAW Plus mode. But I have to wait, uh, was it coming out in like in four months from now, something like that. So I'm excited about that as well. But I'm looking at what's coming up soon, and it's the Galaxy S22 Ultra. And for the Pixel 6, if I could find it right now. As for the fingerprint sensor, it's not too bad. I've gotten used to it. It's not terrible. Um, let's go down to the Lightroom app once again. And if you guys like the look that you guys made, you guys can always go ahead and save it. Just tap on these three dots over here and it says create preset. Just go ahead and tap on that. Or if you guys want to go ahead and copy the settings, go ahead and copy it. Now I can't share it because I don't have a paid Adobe account. But for the most part, this is basically what I do to get these great images. Uh, but anyways, guys, I mean, these phones out there, you can't go wrong with any of them. I think OnePlus is now 
it's on that level in which it's, it could really rock with some of the best phones. For years now, we've been at telling, saying that OnePlus needs better cameras, and now it's time to like you know give them some props. So just to give you guys an example of what I've been able to do. So just to show you guys some of my work on Instagram, be sure to follow me at underscore alter tech. This was taken with the Pixel. This all taken in raw and edited. This was taken with the Sony a7 III. And I want to show you guys, I took a lot of photos in 2021 with the OnePlus 9 Pro. Some of you guys are not even going to be able to believe it. So this was taken with the expert mode in RAW, I believe. So I'm going to activate RAW. And I'm going to just line everything up, snap it, and then I'm just going to go ahead. Actually, I don't think I, did I edit this? I don't think I did edit, editing. The sunset was so beautiful that the phone was able to capture the colors and make it a little bit more saturated. I know it's more saturated on Octogen OS 12. This one for sure. So this was definitely taken with RAW and I definitely edited uh, this image. So you're getting some beautiful images and some of you guys might say this looks like it was taken with a professional camera. So yeah, um, for me, uh, I'm pretty happy with any camera from the Samsung to the OnePlus to the Pixels and even the iPhones. I think they're, you know, a great tool if you guys like taking great photos. Uh, OnePlus 9 Pro, OnePlus 9 Pro, OnePlus 9 Pro, OnePlus 9 Pro, OnePlus 9 Pro. So all of these images were taken with the OnePlus 9 Pro. So I went heavy yesterday. So yeah, I was a 2021 OnePlus camera ambassador and my job was just to like, you know, take really good photos. And the reason why I was able to take so many great photos was because the camera was that damn good and I was inspired. Now this one was taken with the ultra wide camera, which I'm going to miss on the OnePlus 10 Pro. This was a flagship camera for the ultra wide, which was unheard of. And I guess maybe, maybe I should have done a better job of advertising it, but I really didn't talk about it much, but it was actually one of my favorite cameras to use like for example over here look how beautiful uh this image actually came out this was all possible thanks to that flagship sensor and some people are going to be like hey it's you know maybe oneplus was able to optimize this new sensor with you know software but then some of us are going to be like yeah but you're going to give up a bigger sensor for a smaller sensor um doesn't make any sense i thought we we're going to go all in on this so I understand they're trying to, you know, cut down costs and whatnot. And the average consumer, they're probably not going to take photos like this anyways, um, like an anomaly. So it's better for them to just get that ultra super wide angle and have fun with it. Because I believe that's what a lot of people will actually use the ultra wide for rather than taking photos like me, which you could probably frame up on your wall. And expand mode as well. That's coming back to the OnePlus 10 Pro. So anyways, guys, if you have any questions or comments or if you're trying to decide which phone you want or you want to decide whether or not to get the iPhone 13 Pro or OnePlus 9 Pro or Pixel 6 Pro, um, just hit me up. Actually, don't do that. And this photo was actually liked by the CEO of OnePlus, Pete Lau. I got crazy happy when I actually saw that. So uh, shout out to Pete Lau and the rest of the OnePlus team. Take care, guys. Peace.